Welcome to Variable Valve Control. This is just the introduction. You'll see it broken down into four sections because there's some very important sections. First, we're going to talk about valve timing. That was the first changes made in valve control where we simply varied the timing for varying engine conditions. We're going to stress the characteristic of changing advance and retard on both the intake and exhaust valves so we can use that as part of our diagnostics because an important part of our program, we feel, is teaching how to diagnose valve timing problems. Now, the second stage of valve control is valve lift. At valve lift, we eliminate the throttle plate. Some of the early applications, such as BMW, maintained the throttle plate for cranking the engine and then going open unless it was an emergency condition. Most other newer vehicles that you're going to see we're going to have no throttle plate. Now, the reason for eliminating the throttle plate is we eliminate manifold vacuum, and manifold vacuum is responsible for significant losses in the engine. And then the final thing that everyone's aware of is cylinder deactivation. We're looking specifically at the GM and the Chrysler V8 engines. They're getting five to six miles per gallon better on the same size vehicles as compared to a vehicle that does not have cylinder deactivation. They have large horsepower suitable for towing, 300 plus horsepower, and when you eliminate half the cylinders, you still have 150 